All is well. The bridge instruments are in Captain order. Wilde, master of the nine and a half thousand tons in Edmund, comes aboard modestly, almost anonymously, to take over from Captain Novrov. For the next 24 hours, he'll be totally responsible for ship, crew, passengers, for all who sail in the Harridge packet. boats between Harwich and Holland as early as the 17th century, carrying mail, as their name implies, and a few passengers. There's been some kind of service virtually ever since. Probably fewer businessmen travel to Europe by boat than in the past. Today, it's rucksacks in summer, senior citizens all the year round, particularly midweek. Every Englishman, surely, there stirs the memory of ancient adventures as he sets foot on the gangway and finds his sea legs again. Well, no, according to the bosun. This chap, you know, we had two gangway doors open. We had one door open on one side so that you got more air conditioning down below, you know. Well, this passenger, he walked straight up this gangway door with his suitcase and he walked right across the ship and walked straight out through the other doors over the side. And uh, that's, that's the truth. And, and, uh, the pier boat, what we term the pier boat, you know, they just happened to be handy at the time and they picked him up. Captain Wilde, a seafarer from the age of 14, takes on the mantle of command. Officers and crew make ready for the familiar crossing to the Hook of Holland. The second mate switches on the radar scanners, eyes to see them safely across one of the world's busiest seas. Inside the bridge, he tests the throttles, which give the master direct control over 21,000 shaft horsepower, driving the ship at 22 knots. They can be operated from the engine room under the master's direction. To avoid giving passengers heart attacks, the second mate issues a warning before testing what I'd call the horn. Passengers on the open decks are warned that the ship's whistles are about to be tested. <laughs> Even before we've left Parkston Quay, the British are getting down to a traditional pastime, queuing. Perhaps they're checking their tickets or booking a cabin with the purser. And of course, everyone will need a landing card, but not for six and a half hours. No, the Dutch are queuing as well. They're just saving time later on. The Harwich packet carries Dutch officials who carry out passport checks and immigration control during the voyage. When the boat reaches the hook, passengers go straight to the customs, but the British will have another chance to queue when they come home. The Dutch officials have a somewhat military air, but they seem mild enough. Attention, please. Would all persons not travelling on the vessel please go ashore now as the gangways will shortly be landed. Any person not travelling on the vessel Kindly go ashore now as the gangways will shortly be landed. Thank you.
can be a confusing moment for the less experienced Voyager. More than one with an imperfect sense of distance has asked if that's Holland over there. Actually, it's Shotley, and next to it, Felixstowe. Which side would you like? Green to green or red to red, please? Red to red, please. We're, we're going up this way. Uh, stand by one, sir, please. Red to red. Heading out to sea, passing the Dana Anglia returning from Esbjerg in Denmark, it's important to wave for luck. Nautical superstitions die hard, even on the most up-to-date ships. In bad weather, the captain stays on the bridge. Today, he'll probably go below, but not until every inshore hazard has been cleared. Even then, he'll be on call throughout the voyage. Well, of course, we've got a reputation for making speed, and we have to catch trains both ends. And at the hook end, they are transcontinental trains to Italy and uh, Scandinavia, and particularly the Russian train, which goes through Warsaw. Viking, Viking, St. Edmund, are you cutting up north of the wrecks? Yes, sir, we'll be uh, going round as soon as we get the south ship once we go north of the wrecks. Thank you very much. We'll have a yes, Very good. The few cables to starboard passes another of the car ferries plying between the east coast and the continent. Daily crossings to the Hook began in 1893 using paddle steamers. By 1910, the Great Eastern Railway had replaced them all with the new steam turbines. These sturdy boats were designed to rush passengers and mail or packets to rail connections with many parts of Europe. Even during the Great War, an intermittent service was maintained in spite of submarines and mines. By 1920, the daily service was restarted using former hospital ships. Three years later, the London Northeastern Railway took over and commissioned three new ships. Built on Clydebank, they each carried 1,500 passengers, the Vienna, the Amsterdam and the Prague, which survived World War II and reopened the service in 1945. The new vessel, the Arnhem, the first to burn oil, was delivered in 1947. The following year, the railways were nationalised, and in 1950, another Amsterdam entered service. Cars were loaded by crane, but standards of comfort were high. 1963, the Avalon, later adapted as a drive-on car ferry and still in service. Next to the St Edmund, the largest British ship in the fleet is the St George, built in 1968. 